of relationship and marital wisdom part two our objective this morning we shall identify foundational truths about marriage foundational truths about marriage we shall understand the purpose of marriage and then we shall unravel relationship and marital wisdom foundational truth about marriage understanding the purpose of marriage and unraveling relationship and marital wisdom so many things were said in the first service and it will be very very difficult to go through all of them because of the volume of what we had said so far but i'd like you to try and pick that up because it's exactly half of what i'm about to say that i said in the last service and very very important things but by way of introduction marriage i said in the first service is such an important subject important institution that deserves far more attention than it is currently given far more attention why is marriage so important i mentioned three things in the first service and i'm going to mention another three in this service number one or which is number four now marriage is so important because it is the oldest institution in the world oldest institution older than education older than cities older than communities is the oldest institution in the world when in genesis chapter 2 verse 21 and 24 the lord god caused the deep sleep to fall upon man and he took one of the ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Then he joined the marriage in verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. It's the oldest institution in the world. Number two, marriage is important because it was God himself who joined the first wedding. God joined the first, he officiated the first marriage. He. And whatever God is involved in must be very important. Hallelujah. Thirdly, marriage is so important that even though the Son of God did not need the seed of man to be born yet he had to come through a marriage setting did you get that even though the son of god did not need the seed of man to be born yet he had to come through a marriage setting Jesus was to be born by a virgin. A virgin could be found anywhere. And as a matter of fact, a virgin means someone who has, who has not known a man, which means she's not married. But God had to locate a virgin that was in a marriage context. 
Because the son of God had to come from a marriage context. In Luke chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Do you understand that? That is God honors marriage to a point. He honored marriage and honors marriage to a point. That he had to dignify the arrival of his son by being born in a setting of marriage. I think I have one more to give. Thirdly, or fourthly, fourthly now for this service, marriage is so important that the first miracle Jesus performed in the whole world happened at a marriage. The first miracle he ever performed happened at a wedding occasion. That was John chapter 2 from verse 1 all the way to verse 11. If Jesus valued the marriage to a point where he decided that his first miracle must happen at a, at a wedding, then marriage must not be treated as shabbily as many people treat marriage today. Having said that, foundational truth, I mean, the importance of marriage. Let's look at some truths that are foundational for marriage. Again, like I said, we said many in the first service, up to five of them. And we, shall not, we may not be able to. Alright, maybe I will just quickly rush through. Not for the sake of writing, but just for the sake of we said at first that God is the originator, initiator, and founder of marriage. We said that in the first service. He's the originator, initiator, and founder of marriage. Second, we said that marriage was instituted for the help and assistance and succor of the marriage partners. That is, marriage was instituted so that the man can help the wife and vice versa. We said also that God caused the deep sleep to come on the man so that he can god can be allowed to prepare what is best for man without man's inter interference and then we also said that the woman was created from the rib taken from close to the heart of the man because she was created to be loved and then fifthly we say that the devil is agitated about god's plan and purpose for the marriage now let us look at five other points on the foundation of marriage number one Marriage was instituted for security and safety of the marriage of the parties involved. The security and the safety of the parties involved. There is a way in which the wife is security to the man's life and there is a way in which the man is security to the woman's life in jeremiah chapter 31 and in verse 22 he said and how long will thou go about O thou backsliding daughter for the lord hath created a new thing in the earth a woman shall compass a man a woman shall compass a man a woman shall surround a man. A man shall surround his wife. There are many who would have been dead before their time or maybe ran mad if not for the kind of wife God gave them or the kind of husband God gave them. I heard a story that happened in the middle of the Nigerian Civil War. 
the soldiers eyes were very red and things were happening and there was this man who had offended the soldiers at that time i think they demanded to use his vehicle or his um, his vehicle transportation for their military business and agenda at that time it was in the heat of the war and the man had refused or maybe he had an excuse that he wasn't going to give them his vehicle or something and then he come at, at, at there's something else happened Suddenly, one of the soldiers cocked his gun and said, They are going to waste him. It is you people we are fighting for, and you are there messing up. And the wife of this man just ran in between the gun and the and the and the man and stood in the front and said, You want to kill him? Kill me first. What will I do about my children? He said the soldier's eyes was as red as red. And he, can, he carried the man and handed him over to, his, to the woman. And said, Madam, take your husband. He said, you man, for your information, it is this woman that saved you. A woman shall compass a man. Your husband is helped from vulnerability by your influence around him your wife is helped from her vulnerability by surrounding him that is why i don't understand the arrangement where a man is in one place and the woman is in another place and marriage is still holding for safety for coverage number two The marriage institution okay number two the relationship between the man and his wife is like the relationship of flesh and bones with each other the relationship of bones and flesh with each other Genesis 2, 23. He said, this is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. The wife is the bone of the, of the man's bone and the flesh of the man's flesh. The husband is the bone of the woman's bone and the flesh of the woman's flesh. It's an intricate relationship. It's an intertwining relationship. That is why marital disagreements cause a lot of pain. Marital disharmony causes a lot of pain. Because you cannot tear flesh from flesh without pain. You can't tear bone from bone without pain. It causes so much pain. Because that is what it is. Number three. For marriage to be successful, there must be a living before there can be a cleaving. A living before there can be a cleaving. Genesis 2 and in verse 24, he said, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. I will come to that later. But there must be a living before there can be a cleaving. Any man or woman who allows the undue influence of external people, especially family people, to interfere and control their relationship, they don't have a marital future. Any man, any woman who allows mother and father brother and sister to have so much influence in their home they don't have a marital future because there must be a living before there can be a cleaving and there is just one exception that exception is if the person you are married to 
is abusive of your life to the point where it hurt and injures your destiny you don't keep it away from your family you don't keep it away from your loved ones so that your life can be rescued beyond that every undue influence into the day-to-day -day relationship of husband and wife in a home every such undue interference is signature for failure there must be a living before there can be a cleaving i'll come to that later on is god speaking to anybody here at all very important number four now openness mutual openness is key to marital success mutual openness the bible said in genesis 2 25 therefore shall him he said and they were both naked the man and his wife and they were not ashamed mutual openness is key to marital success there are spouses who deliberately don't want their partner to know who they are the wife the man doesn't really know the wife and the wife doesn't really know the man this man has money somewhere and the man is and the woman is not aware this girl has a child somewhere and the man is not aware i've actually seen a relationship where the child of the lady is growing in the house of the couple and the another and the man is not aware that is the wife's child it's a cousin it's a nephew it's a relation that is a house help helping in the house disaster Wahala day. That will never be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Openness. But there are situations where openness becomes difficult. Like I preached in the last service. Where a man opens himself to you and you use it against him. Where the woman opens herself to you and you use it against her it becomes impossible to trust another time but the rule if there must be marital success there must be mutual openness finally The enemy targets marital harmony and dignity. Between marriage couples, the enemy targets marital harmony and dignity between married couples. He targets it. When a man and his wife are united, when they are happy, the enemy is unhappy. Am I communicating? I want you to bear that in mind. The devil is a sadist. Anything that makes people happy, he's angry with it. You know, I, told, I said in the first service, when God created man, the devil did not move. When God created animals the devil did not move but one god created a woman and joined the home in genesis chapter 2 verse 24 25 when he joined the home look at that again and they were both naked the man and his wife and we are not ashamed the next verse said now the serpent next verse the serpent did not move until the, the home was formed. And look at the impact of the serpent's move. When God brought Eve to Adam, what did Adam say? Genesis 2.23. 
This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This woman and me, we are one. We are one. She is the bone of my bone. She is the flesh of my flesh. But after the devil attacked, Adam changed language. Genesis chapter 3 verse 12. Look at the language of Adam. And the woman said, the, the man said, the woman, in fact, back up to verse 11 first. And, and God is telling Adam, who's told you that you are naked? Have you eaten the, of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that you should not eat? And the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me. Hola, hola. It's not bone of your bone again. <laughs> it's not flesh of your flesh again. What happened? The woman. In fact, he was blaming God. Number one, you are the one who gave me the woman. Number two, I don't even have anything to do with her. She's just staying beside me here. <laughs> don't ever forget. Every time the devil see you and your wife and family happy, he moves to spoil it. He's a sadist. He has manic depressive illness. If you want to know how the devil behaves, see those he possess. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just look at how calm and cool and collected I'm looking. Because I carry the spirit of God. Look at those who carry the spirit of the devil. Is he not pursuing somebody on the road? Hair is scattered. He's depressed. He's all manner. The devil fights beauty. Don't forget it. He fights beauty. He fights harmony. He fights dignity. He fights decency. Anything that is beautiful, anything that is dignified, anything that is decent, the devil hates it. But I see today, God giving you victory over that devil. Somebody say it loud, Amen. Somebody say it louder, Amen. Somebody say the loud, but say Amen. Say after me, say whether the devil likes it or not. I must be successful. Say it louder, say whether the devil likes it or not. I must be successful. In my relationships, I must be. Having said all of that, what wisdom do we need? for marital relationship again i said seven things in the first service we can't go over them because of time but let's start from number one which will be like number eight for the overall first marry all right number one trust god for a partner who truly loves and fears God truly I say truly loves and fears God because every authentic child of God who loves and fears God every authentic one will be a good wife and a good husband that was why the Bible said second, in 2 second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, that we should be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Unequal yoking. It's like hitching a cow and a goat. And I can tell you, my brothers and sisters, the reason why you must allow God to assist you in the process of marriage 
Because not all that glitters is gold. You can, you can get a good brother in church. Very, very, very humble looking. Very, very, very decent looking. Looks like a gentleman. But he's a demon on the inside. Am I communicating? Haven't you heard people say, but we met in church. We met in church. We met in church. Oh yes, Satan attends church too. Judas Iscariot was in church. That is why. Do you know that there are many people who pretend to be Christians who come to church? I think I've told you this story before. Take your seat. Of a, a man who came to church because he says in his heart, if I go to church, I will find a good Christian lady to marry. All these Jezebels and all these Rarish girls on the road I can't marry any of them So he packaged himself as a Christian And came to church A, a drunkard Then a lady also came to church And she said It's good to get a good church man to marry They will treat you well They will love you So she packaged herself And pretended That she has changed and came to church the unfortunate thing was that the two of them found each other. <laughs> they found each other. The man found the woman and they both pretentiously married each other. When they reach home, the man opened his bottle of beer. The woman lit her cigarette. One, one. The, 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 the man said, I thought you were a Christian. The woman said, me too. That was how the house exploded in flames. I'm telling you a real story. The way a person dressed cannot confirm to you that they know God. Even though he's part of it in the long run. I've seen people who have who have? Do you remember one lady we met some years ago? Without form and void. No makeup, nothing. You remember her? This girl does not know the number of men that she had had relationship with in, the, in her life. If you look at her, she looks very meek, very calm. She is the one that. She is the one that takes herself to the road to look for men. She comes and says, oh, I just like you. And she was so possessed. When we prayed for her, what came out? Ring came out of life. Ring life came out of her mouth. That is why it is very, very important. Because, you see, you don't know people. You don't know people. You don't, you don't know content. You may know container but not content. You may know the moment but not the future. There are people who can behave good today and become devils tomorrow. Do you understand that? You don't know that the one that was called Lucifer was that was that is called Satan was once Lucifer. The most celebrated angel in heaven. You will not miss it. You, your children will not miss it. Your family will not miss it. If it is tomorrow before you miss it, may God show you a dream, a revelation that will scatter everything in the name of Jesus. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Trust God for a partner who truly loves and fears God in my experience. If anybody really fears and loves God, he will be a good wife. He will be a, she will be a good wife, a good husband. Number two, decide to marry someone you can listen to and submit to. You can listen to and submit to. What do I mean by that? 
Someone you respect enough to value their counsel. And I am not just talking about because when you talk about submission, people think that generally submission means husband is boss and wife is subservient. Well, submission, look at Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21 all the way to verse 22. He said, submitting yourselves. That is both husband and wife. Submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives. Now to be specific, wives, submit yourselves unto one, to your own husbands as unto the Lord. And husbands, love for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Then husbands, okay, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And then after that, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Now we can stop there. Where it begins is submitting yourselves one to another. So there is the time the, the man bends to the counsel of his wife. And there is the time the woman is bending. But he said if there happens to be a class for any reason. For that moment let the woman submit. Wives, submit yourself. But now, the main point here is anybody you don't think is valuable enough to counsel you, why do you want to marry them? Hello? Anybody you don't think is valuable enough to give you counsel, There is a traditional talk in Africa where they say it's women talk. It's, it's woman, woman wisdom. Who said? He says, submit yourselves one to another. Abigail saved the life of David. It would have been wasted. So saved the life of what's the name of the man? Neighbor. The life of neighbor. David was all, almost going to waste neighbor. We can go on and on through our scripture. If you marry, I'm sorry to say this, if you marry a fool, it, it means your foolishness is more than the one you married. See, this woman is just a fool. Ay, 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 ay. It means that your life is a fertile ground for the production of fools and the raising of fools. You indict yourself for lack of wisdom that made you to choose a fool. This man that I married is a mumu. It means your own mumuity or mumuciousness is worse than the man's mumuciousness. For you saw mumu with your eyes. And you went to marry Mumu. Am I communicating? There are those who don't listen to wife, don't listen to husband, don't listen to anything. What kind of life is this? There are those whose arrogance have destroyed them in time past. Don't marry anyone. You cannot submit to. Don't marry anyone whose counsel does not matter. Am I communicating? And let me make this emphatic for our sisters here. That man you cannot respect in courtship. You don't think he knows more than you. Don't marry him. Otherwise you are signing for frustration for your life. Anyone you don't think has superior wisdom to you as a woman. You don't think he has anything to offer to your life. It's not wisdom to marry them. You can't say sir to him. You can't bend for him. 
You can't submit to him. Look for who you can submit to. Just, just look for who you can submit to. Look for who you can defer to. Look for who you can value enough. Look for whose counsel you can listen to. We have a general duty of submission. But the woman has a more specific duty of submission. While the man has a very specific mission of love. Husband, love your wife. Wife, submit to your husband. When it is done very well, it flows. I don't beg my wife to submit to me. She submits to me effortlessly and excitedly. And she doesn't beg me to love her. I love her effortlessly and excitedly. It is a clockwork mechanism. Am I communicating at all? This is very important. Determine that the person you are marrying, you value them enough, you respect them enough to value their counsel. Number three. Just one moment. Just a moment. Someone say loud amen. So, what, what was the number one? Please, let's go over it. Let me just trace my bearing. Trust God for a partner. Number two, decide to marry someone you can listen to. Number three, marry someone who values, who truly values, truly values, truly loves and values your family and loved ones truly loves and values your family and loved ones the proof that the person values you is that he or she values your family values your loved ones The statement of Ruth, we use it many times during marriages. In Ruth chapter 1 verse 16, when Ruth was talking to Naomi, she said, Entreat me not to leave you or to return from following after you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. This is classical of any love relationship. Young man, that woman you want to marry did not come out of Iroko tree. It's all right. He came out of a family. A family that groomed her and grew with her. Mother, father, brother, sister. I remember he married many years ago. This young girl lost her mother very young. And her father raised her up. When she grew, she got a job uh, with one of the institutions that made people to travel out of the country and, and so on. Foreign mission posters. And, and it was very lucrative for her. So she, she decided to help her father to raise the rest of the children since the father suffered to raise her. And that became a problem from the so-called husband. The man just stepped into her life, has no regard for her history, had no regard for how she grew. Just want this guy. If the next time you send money to your father, he said, No, I have to help my father raise my siblings. He said, No, that is before we got married, not now. Your money is no longer your money. What a useless man. 
Those are the those are the those are the kind of men that insult masculinity. Useless man. Put this girl under pressure. Put her under pressure. And on top of that, will be beating the hell out of her. He was a half level qualification. Had an OND or something. Girl was a graduate, had a car. And that is one other challenge with marrying on equal yoking. And I've said it, ensure that the man is ahead of you. We are necessary as much as possible. Otherwise, they will come with ego problem, inferiority complex. When they feel like they are less than their wife, they take it out physically. That marriage couldn't succeed. Because it, it, it couldn't succeed. By virtue of the fact that you can't help your, 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 your siblings, by virtue of the abuse and everything, it couldn't work. Am I communicating? You did it, the, the girl did not hatch out of rock. She came out of a family. Your, her mother shall become like your mother. Father shall become like your father. That is how life is. And vice versa. You know there are girls who pray. Lord may I marry a man. Whose mother has already died. So that I don't have mother-in-law problem. What a wickedness of heart. So I don't have mother-in-law problem. Who told you there is mother-in-law problem? It depends on how you carry and conduct yourself and depends on how you and your husband organize your life. The best friend of my mother was my wife. And every time I wanted to send something to my mother, I gave it to my wife. And my wife sent it to her. The two of us are one. So say, this girl knows how to take care of mother-in-law. <laughs> and the money is coming from me. <laughs> Guy, this girl knows how to take care of mother. In fact, if I have many of this type, God bless you. God bless every month. She will no month will pass. She won't send me provision. She will send me rapper. She will send me money. What did I do to God to find this kind of daughter in law? I'll give her the money. She will pass it. I'll give her. If she wants to ask me anything, she will ask her. She is kinder to her than myself in her eyes. And I am okay like that. I mean, it, it depends on how you run your home. There are, there are people, they are the ones that tear their wife down in front of their mother first. Tear their wife down in front of their father. Call this girl and advise her. You are talking to your mother and father like that. And talking about your wife like that. They will naturally side with you. And naturally deal with this stranger that came to interfere with the peace of their son. But all said and done, wisdom is profitable to direct. Anybody whose family you don't want to accept, look for another person to marry. Did you hear what I just said? Anybody whose family you... Now, don't misunderstand me. There are families like everywhere where you have very wicked family people. Is that correct? Oh, very, very wicked family people. That is an understanding between you and your husband on how to handle such a situation. Okay? It's an understanding. Oh, if your husband himself is aware, he can't even go home because <laughs> uh, that, that's a challenge. So you know how to. But other than that, where a family is a neutral, normal, calm family. And you come and because you married, you scatter the home. No unity among siblings anymore because somebody arrived. That's not correct. The Lord will give us help. The Lord will give us understanding. I've seen a woman enter the home and stopped. I think they even wrote a letter to all the relations. Don't near this family. Yes. 
It was a law. Don't enter this family forever. Siblings, the same mother, the same father. They can't visit their brother's house. You know what happened at the end? The man came down with affliction. And the family that would have normally surrounded him, because who surrounds you determines what you survive. They couldn't, they couldn't be found. When they will arrive, the case has crossroad. And the worst thing that can happen to anybody is to be in suffering and your loved ones are not surrounding you. In Acts chapter 14 verse 20, it was those who surrounded Paul the apostle that caused him to survive when they stoned him to die. It, they surrounded him and caused him to survive. Please, marry the person. Wow, time is up. The person. Who truly loves and values your family. That was number three. Number four. Are we going to number four? Number four. Allow zero tolerance. For every form of abuse. Zero. Or call it zero allowance. Give zero allowance. For any, every form of abuse. Zero allowance. Give zero allowance. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12 said. Whatsoever. You will that men should do to you. Do ye even so to them. For this is the law. And the prophets. Don't do to anybody. What you don't want anybody to do to you. And don't submit yourself. To be handled in ways. that the other person subjecting you to such will not allow to be handled. Many of the things that is called abuse, the signs of it are found in courtship. Many. There are some that escape and the people only find out that the man is very terrible or the woman as the case may be because there are times to say, who beat you? My husband. At times it's who beat you? My wife. <laughs> there are people there are people who 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 is my husband my wife zero allowance now there are degrees of abuse it could be verbal where the after the person has finished talking to you you don't need cane how many of you have heard <laughs> how many of you have heard such such kind of their word is, is worse than, 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 than naked wire. By the time they finish, there are those who have rendered their wife or their husband a shadow of themselves. This girl has no confidence in public. Because I'm managing you. Look at you, wretched family people. Is it not me who came to your family and made, made sense in your, in, your, in your family? Look at you. By the time they finish talking to this girl or the man as the case may be, at times they, 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 they feel like dying. There are people who have felt like that. It's verbal. Some it is emotional. They are not talking. But their silence is worse than their words. They pass as if you don't exist. Welcome, sir. Mm -hmm. You had a great day at work. Mm. Emotional. And the emotional things at times can go into deprivation. 
And I'll come to that shortly. They are sl smiling with everybody. Once his wife arrives, he keeps a straight face. As if an enemy just arrived. Very brutal. Some deprive their partners, wife especially, of relationship. Months, years passing. As if a stone is not existing. Maybe they are finding it out somewhere. Maybe they have a, an outside arrangement that is attending to that need of their life. And they are living with a stone and they don't care whether she gets anything or not. mental and the final is physical i don't consider a man to be a man who can carry a hand and slap a woman he's not a man the same person that god gave you to cover to protect to defend listen to me sit down peace peace just sit down sit down to avoid anybody falling down just sit down You cannot fall from a sitting position. Sit down, sit down, sit down, please. Because what I'm talking now, <laughs> I don't want you to be distracted with falling down. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Maybe they are finding hell from outside. Then, this girl or the is just dying. The same person that you should be looking that anybody. You know what happened to me one day? My wife came home. When we came to Abuja Newly, she was still practicing medicine because she practiced about a year and a half before she joined me full time. She came home one day crying. And I said to her, What happened? Her colleague, medical doctor, a man, look for her trouble in the office i say what me that is the owner of the wife <laughs> i am not making her to cry it's strange that i want to make her cry and you're a man like myself they haven't born you yet i entered the car and drove like jehu <laughs> Fool! until i reach the place show me the man When I finish with the man, no physical exchange. It didn't last in that walk for two more weeks. And I didn't talk to anybody to sack him. My presence sacked him. Then someone is enjoying the tears of his wife. I said, I don't consider a man a man who can carry and hit the wife. If you are interested in fighting, there are many Agbero boys in the Riawan Motor Park. <laughs> they are looking, in fact, they are waiting for fight. Very high on ganja. <laughs> that is where to go. Or go to Cardinal Road and enter the bush. I say you are looking for those who used to catch people. Look for. Go to where they are lifting weight. See somebody say I'm, I'm looking for who to hit or who can hit me. There are some who will hit you with one hand. You won't wake up. And you know, sometimes you don't need to hit the woman before you say you beat her. She hold her hand like this, and you hold it tight, small. <laughs> so he has been beating me since. What 
happen? He held my hand. In fact, if you, if you touch the hand now, you can see the mark. Hallelujah. This is my counsel. If you are tired with anybody's child, hand them over to their parents. You took them from somewhere, hand them over their indignity. And if they don't want to hand you over, hand yourself over. Because there are some who could even be addicted to the abuse. They are just addicted. Addicted, there is a syndrome. Addicted to, to the maltreatment. This is a place where family comes in. This will never be your portion. 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 No verbal, emotional, physical. It's not allowed. Zero allowance. Life is too short to leave it in tension. Did you hear what I just said? It's too short to leave it in tension. It's too short to leave it in tension. It's too short to leave it in tension. That was number four, number five. And my time is actually up. In communication, that's number five. Try to see things from the other person's perspective. In communication, try to see things from the other person's perspective. The summary is try to understand before seeking to be understood. Try to understand before seeking to be understood. James chapter 1 verse 19. James 1 19. He said, Wherefore my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Let your hearing be quicker than your speaking. You and your wife, you have an issue. Maybe she has a point of view that you don't list him first. Let her explain her stand. And then speak. Vice versa. Listen to your husband first. And here is point out this matter is heavier on women because I'm sure you know how women can talk, madam. No, no, wait, let me talk first. You know, from the you see, the last time when we started talking, I tried my best for, to, for, for you to understand what I'm saying. You didn't understand. Now, I went to the market, and from the market, I passed through my friend's house. And men don't have patience to talk like that. So that's why some brutal men just say, Madam, please close your mouth. Close your mouth. Say, why are you trying to slap me? Say, no, I'm trying to ask you to close it. <laughs> you know, the statistic shows that women talk more words a day than men. That's the truth. Try to understand what a guy is saying. Men don't talk too much. Understand what he's saying. Understand his point of view. Understand why the matter annoyed him. You know.
know most times intentions are perfect but actions are faulty the person didn't have a bad intention he wasn't planning to offend you. he wasn't planning to do something wrong but in the course of doing the thing he became faulty so let us judge people by the intention not by the action just try and understand the intention try and understand the intention try and understand the intention maybe it can calm you down regarding the action oh the action is in that intention wasn't bad after all okay i thought you i thought you didn't want to heed my instruction oh no sir it's not that i didn't want to heed your instruction i decided to do this other one first because of this and that let us begin to judge to try to find out the intentions and judge the intentions and pardon the actions provided the intentions are correct provided the intentions are accurate provided the mindset is correct judge the intention and pardon the action number six i have one more and then we are true in communication try to understand before being understood number is it six now six be friendly be friendly maintain friendliness with your spouse proverbs chapter 18 verse 24 a man that as friends must show himself friendly be friendly avoid over officialness over officialness i mentioned it in the first service official husband official wife lubricate your relationship with friendliness don't be more friendly with outsiders than with your wife or husband. It's an aberration. More friendly with someone else than your wife, especially of the opposite sex, or than your husband is not correct. Create the atmosphere. There are those who smile for everybody until they, like I just said, the, 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 the husband arrives or the wife and then everything dries up. Let me tell you the truth. If your best friend is not your spouse, something is wrong somewhere. Can anything be closer to you than your bone? This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Something is wrong somewhere. I'm not saying something is wrong with you. It may be wrong with the spouse, but something is wrong somewhere. If your best friend, your closest, I mean, best friend, closest confidant, and like I said before, my wife, I don't have my checkbook in my possession. The other last week, she wasn't around for a few days. And I wanted to give a sacrificial offering in the church. And I needed a check. I had to send. And she had to give direction to as to where it is not to me now, to one of the people go here go here and pick the check is in her possession pick it and give it to me and they picked it and gave it to me and i signed the question is since it is her possession can she make any demand any day anyhow no can she sign it she's not signatory there are people you can't do that for them they will be asking you for money every day. Some may even forge your signature. Until the money, until they watch the money disappear. That is why most times you can't compare yourself with other people. Because human beings are different. They will feed them. Lease will arrive. You just look at yourself. What is uh, I can't okay. 
Sister Kambalas, yes. Thank you, Lord. Um. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. There is something I have been trying to tell you. Uh, you know that I, I, I have suspended this for six months now. I couldn't buy it. But now, before you know it, you realize that you enter one chance. <laughs> So the atmosphere must be created. Atmosphere must be created for trust. Atmosphere must be created for friendliness. Atmosphere must be created such that if you are, if, if your husband is friendly with you and vice versa, you don't take each other for granted. How are you? Did you hear what I just said? At times I tell my wife, Beko. I will just, will just be gisting with such a, I will, can use any of such words. That doesn't disappear, sir, from her mouth. This morning, sir, it, it can't disappear it. Please, make life easy for yourself. Dissolve the tension from your family and determine to maintain friendliness. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, I receive the grace. I receive that grace. I receive that grace for friendly relationship. I receive it now in the name of Jesus. Was that number six? All right. Number seven which is the final. It's the same like number. It's almost the counterpart of number six. Find quality time together to activate relationship bonding. Quality time together to activate relationship bonding. Bonding in the relationship. Quality time together. Quality time is bonding time. Bonding time. Bonding time. What do you do that use the time for? You see in Genesis chapter 26 and in verse 8, Isaac was spending quality time with his wife. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at the window and saw, and behold, Isaac was spotting. With Rebecca, his wife, spending time, quality time. What, what do you spend the time doing? Anything that is of mutual interest. It might be study. It might be praying. It might be reading. Anything that all of you like to do. Anything. No matter how little the time is. Both with wife, children, quality time, bonding time. Like I said in the last service, these times are times where you facilitate mutual fulfillment and satisfaction. Quality time. As busy as we are, God still gives us the grace. Time with children, no matter how small. Time with family. Quality time is bonding time. We live in a very high-paced world. We live in a very, very high speed world. We live in a world where um, you, 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 can become, you can become so busy for what is most important in your life. What is most important? Your faith is first and your family is next in, in order of importance. Faith first, family next in order of importance. No matter how crowded and how scheduled your life is, don't neglect time, no matter how little you, it is with your family. I believe that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I have not finished the preaching. I'll continue next Sunday. But has somebody been blessed so far?